But what do members of the public think? Could these plans be enough to save the government's reputation? Luke Trill is the UK director of More in Common, an organisation which gathers data from focus groups across the country. They've been speaking to UK voters from far and wide to get their th- on these new ambitious measures. So, Luke, welcome to the programme. What have you established that voters want? I know that they definitely care about levelling up. I mean, that's your first major finding, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. And it's quite extraordinary for a sort of Westminster Whitehall policy, the amount of resonance that levelling up has had. In almost every group that we speak to, we find that majorities of people have heard of it. And they have really quite high expectations for the policy as well. They feel that it's something that the government has promised. And now they really want to hold their feet to the fire for the delivery of it. And what's really interesting as well is, again, unlike lots of policies, which perhaps don't interest and animate the public, as much as they might do you or I or people who do politics day in, day out. This is something that really animates people. People all have their own suggestions for the thing that they think needs to be done to improve their area. And is that very subjective or can you generalise? Is there a picture of what people want? And I suppose, do, do these 12 missions answer to those expectations? Yeah, what's really interesting is that when people talk about levelling up, they don't talk about it in terms of the kind of grand infrastructure projects, big things like HS2, things that, you know, again, might excite us uh, in Westminster. It's very much about improvements to their everyday. And so whenever we talk to voters, whether it's in Blythe, Blackpool, Bradford, what they're most likely to focus on is, is my local high street going to get better? Is the park at the end of the road going to have the glass removed so that I can take my kids there again? Are you going to do more to clamp down on crime and antisocial behaviour? So it's very much, they want to see those improvements at the hyper-local level, the things which really matter in their every day. And unfortunately, um, I haven't yet had time to wade through all 330 pages of the white paper, which was just released. But what, from what I have seen, and looking at some of the policies in there, it's clear there really has been that laser-like focus, not just on the big things and these 12 national missions, which are quite exciting and make for good headlines, but also that investment in parks, um, the investment in you know tackling crime. Uh, there are policies in there around making sure that young people who engage in antisocial behaviour, clean up that uh, the efforts of that, do graffiti cleaning. That sort of thing really matters to people. And I think we'll go a long way towards meeting people's expectations. You talk about these things, um, the expectations being very much on a sort of macro-local level, uh, which, of course, is why there's been such a big focus on devolution. But uh, now we're hearing talk of, of, of possibly a new minister joining the cabinet representing the north of England. Isn't that the opposite of devolution? Isn't that just another person with a fat salary in Westminster? Um, I suspect that is the uh, the sort of reaction that you'd be likely to get from one of our focus groups. And I think it would be a real shame if something uh, like levelling up, which isn't just important for Boris Johnson's prospects or this government, but actually for people's faith that democracy can deliver for them in these areas that feel neglected. If that came down to, you know, these kind of basically white elephant things, which is, you know, are we going to have a special minister in cabinet? Are we going to have a new brand name? You know, we've had lots of them before, things like the Northern Pan. That would be a real disappointment. What people want is that investment in their communities. And they're really clear, in fact, very clear that they think the people who know best how to improve their communities are people who live in those communities, local representatives themselves. So if levelling up becomes all about metrics and becomes a sort of top down Westminster project, It isn't going to work. What I I like about what I've seen from this white paper, and I think what lots of the people that we've been speaking to like, is that sense that it's not about that. It's about Westminster and Whitehall providing the tools that empower communities to take control of their own destiny. How achievable do you think the time frame is? I mean, it, it seems quite optimistic. Uh, it, it, it is. It's an ambitious uh, time frame. And the people that we've spoken to, we often ask, you know, how long do you think it takes to level up? And, and people are quite realistic. They know, I mean, they will say, if you speak to people in towns across the North and Midlands, they will say, well, my area has been in decline for decades. You're not going to turn it round uh, overnight. 
But what they don't want is for that to become uh, an excuse for complacency. They want to start seeing the investment now. They want that lick of paint. They want the high street cleaned up. They want the local museum to be reopened quickly, recognising that that longer term stuff, transforming education, boosting productivity, does take a bit longer. So I think if levelling up is going to work, it's got to be that combination of the short and long term. But I'm quite impressed that ministers have agreed to really hold their feet to the fire and say, this is where we're going to be by 2030. And I very much hope that the electorate then judge them on uh, meeting those goals. If they're still there. Uh, You've mentioned the high street um, quite often, and that's clearly a a focus for a lot of people that you've spoken to. What do you see in these 12 missions that can't, you know, I mean, we've we've debated how to save the high street ad nauseum for, you know, quite a number of years now. What, What do you see in the 12 missions that might achieve that? Well, so firstly, uh, uh, there's investment expanding uh, existing high street funds. There are also incentives uh, contained within there to make sure that people aren't keeping empty or derelict lots, uh, which often act as a kind of blight on the high street. And we all know that, you know, once you've got a couple of empty lots, then that feeling of uh, decline starts to spread as well. So I think there's some really encouraging uh, steps there and also um Uh, local transport as well you know people will often tell us you know it's just ridiculous that it costs so much for me to get a bus into the local high street so I don't go and they'll very often compare that to bus fares in London which seems significantly cheaper so lots of good stuff there I think there's probably more to do um, around how do you level the playing field for high streets. A common complaint that people say is well how can my local shop compete with Amazon and if I'm honest I'm going to order from Amazon myself, even though I don't like it, just because it's so much cheaper and quicker to be able to do. So I think the next stage is it's great to have that investment making the high streets nicer, easier to get to. I think the next stage is a bit more of that levelling leveling the playing field with those big corporates who aren't, let's face it, good for our high streets. Mm. And just finally and briefly, if you would, um, how important would you say it is that the government gets this right looking to the next election? Uh, I think it is the key issue uh, for the next election. You don't just have to take my word for it. Our polling shows that six in 10 voters say it will be the top issue for them at the next election. And that goes even higher when you look at that group of voters who switched from Labour to Tory at the next election. So the fate of the next election for both the Conservative and Labour Party depends on having that positive vision for community regeneration and getting on with actually starting to deliver it. Well, that's pretty emphatic. Thank you very much. The UK Director of More in Common, Luke 